How is the timeline broken in the novel and film Dances with Wolves, and how can we fix it? In an earlier video, we learned how the real Fort Sedgwick in Colorado was built in 1864, then decommissioned and abandoned in 1871. Meanwhile, the film starts with the main character, Lieutenant John Dunbar, fighting at the fictional Battle of St. David's Field in 1863, one year before the fort he was later assigned to was built. Thanks to unintended heroics, our fictional hero is granted reassignment, at his own request, to the American frontier. He arrives at Fort Hayes in Kansas before the end of the American Civil War then immediately heads out to Fort Sedgwick in Colorado, which is no longer occupied by the U.S. Army. In the novel, when Dunbar writes in his journal, he dates the first entry to the same year we started at. April 12, 1863. I have found Fort Sedgwick to be completely unmanned. The place appears to have been rotting for some time. If there was a contingent here shortly before I came, it too must have been rotting. Have assigned myself cleanup duty, Lieutenant John J. Dunbar, USA. So again, this fictional journal entry was written a year before the fort was even built. We can also look at the thoughts and experiences of Kickingbird, a Native American shaman of the Comanche tribe in the novel, or the Lakota Sioux in the film. Those poor soldiers at the fort, they were a great mystery to Kicking Bird, these white people. He had begun this line of thinking when he thought of the fort, when he thought of going near it. He expected them to be gone, but he thought he would see anyway. And now, as he sat on his pony, looking across the prairie, he could see at first glance the place had been improved. The white man's fort was clean. A little horse, a good-looking one, was standing in the corral. The place should have been dead, but someone had kept it alive. Remember, the place should not have been dead until 1871, eight years after this fictional encounter. Now let's look at the background of Stands with a Fist, a white woman raised among the tribe. Or, as she recalls being nicknamed, the White Girl of the Comanches. She'd been terrified the summer before, in 1862 by the novel's timeline, when it was discovered that white soldiers had come into the country. The band of Comanches had never met the Hare Mouths, except for killing several on isolated occasions. She had hoped they would never meet them. When the white soldiers' horses were stolen late last summer, she had panicked and run off. She was sure the white soldiers would come to the village, but they didn't. Now summer was on them again, and all along the trail from the winter camp she had prayed fiercely for the hair mouths to be gone. Her prayers had not been answered, and once again her days were troubled, hour by hour. Now that we've confirmed the story happened in 1863, how can we fix its timeline to real history? One option is to change the name of the fort and make it completely fictional, in an unspecified state. It could still be based on Fort Sedgwick, though trying to tie a fictional fort in a fictional story to real history would be pointless. But what fun is that? Another option is to change the year of the story to fit Fort Sedgwick's real lifespan of 1864 to 1871. In my opinion, there is no reason for the story to be set at the same time as the American Civil War except as a plot device to set up how the main character has lost his will to live and passion for life, until he finds his place among the Native Americans. There is a paragraph in the book, after the lieutenant first meets with Kicking Bird and stands with a fist, where he sits alone at the fort and wonders how the war is progressing. Suddenly he thought of the Great War. It was possible that he was no longer a representative of the United States. Perhaps the war was over. The Confederate States of America, he couldn't imagine such a thing. But it could be. He'd been without any information for a long time now. 
These thoughts have no impact on the story other than laying the foundation for him wanting to leave the U.S. Army and spend more time with the Native Americans. This brings us to the answer for how to fix the broken timeline. It works if you change the year of the story from 1863 to 1871. When the lieutenant heads out to his new post, and he literally misses by a mile seeing the last soldiers of the fort walking southeast to Kansas. It's a simple fix, but it adds its own problems. For example, were the Native Americans of this fictional story involved in the real historical 1865 attacks on the town of Julesburg, just five miles northeast of the fort? Placing the story in 1863 absolves them of any involvement, whether or not you agree with those actions. This leaves the lieutenant, whose job was to defend that town, free to view the Native Americans as simple, noble, and without fault which we will address in another video. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, films, and online resources featured in this video.